I went down to Captain Tony's to get out of the heat. Tubers and welcome to another episode of Our Haunted Travels. I am your host, Sean Donnelly. And I'm your co-host, Mary Ann Donnelly. And today we are talking about Captain Tony's saloon? Yes. You should have worn your Captain Tony I shirt. I should have. I got Bob Gump on. Yeah. I should have. You should have. Captain Tony's saloon in Key West, Florida. This is Panic D number 1869. And it is located at 428 Green Street in Key West, Florida. Mm-hmm. That song I was singing is actually Jimmy Buffett's song, uh, Last Tango in Paris, which is about Captain Tony. I thought it was Last Mango in Paradise. Maybe it's Last Mango in Paradise. <laughs> did I say Last Tango in Paris? Yeah, you did. It's Last Mango in Paris. Last Mango in Paris. Yeah, so okay. we were both right. Yeah, hey, we were close. <laughs> Yeah. Anyways. That's why we're the perfect pair. So anyways, it's about <laughs> Captain Tony. It's about okay? Captain, Captain Tony. Captain Tony's saloon. Mm-hmm. And Jimmy Buffett lived in Key West, and he was good friends with Captain Tony. And This is an awesome location. It is. It's very it really cool. Is. Very I, cool. I actually uh, found this place when we were going to be going down to uh, Florida for our cruise and I was trying to find a way to get him to drive down the Keys to uh, go and see some sea turtles. She said two things folks. Two things. She wanted to go down the coast to see sea turtles. She said two things. Number one, Robert the Doll and number two, Captain Tony. And I'm like yep. Okay. We're in. (laughs) So then we went, uh... See, for those ladies out there who are trying to get their guy to take them someplace, you just have to find something nearby that they'll want to go to. That's right. I even had a beer hint, in Captain Tony's. Hint, hint, hint. You hint. did. And I and I don't drink alcohol, but no. I had a beer at Captain Tony's. You did. You had a beer at Captain Tony's while I went and hung well, out you in the bathroom. Went, the girls and I do not and go in, eat. and I don't go to the bathroom in public places, so we both okay, did okay, things okay. that are weird. We'll tell them when we get back. We'll tell them when we get back. <laughs> All right, so here's some history about Captain Tony's. And actually, this is uh, one of our episodes that we recorded for... uh, Our Haunted Spotlight. It's not our Haunted Spotlight. The Haunted Spotlight. But anyways, we're reusing that recording. So here's the history and some stories about Captain Tony's. We'll be right back. Captain Tony's Saloon is said to be the oldest saloon in Florida. The establishment is home to a tree that grows through the middle of the chamber. It's said to be the tree from which executions were carried out. Captain Tony's is an iconic divey beach bar named after a modern maritime icon who was once a fishing boat captain gunrunner, gambler, and mayor of Key West, the late great Captain Tony, who died in 2008. Now, he was father to 13 children by five different wives. Captain Tony served the U.S. government as gun runner during the Bay of Pigs. Before becoming a popular watering hole, the building served a few different roles. It was an ice house, the city morgue, a wireless telegraph station, a cigar factory, a speakeasy, even a bordello. It was also the original home of the famous Sloppy Joe's Bar. Now, the bright yellow brick building has been patronized through the years by many well-known artists, writers, and celebrities. In fact, an interesting feature of the bar is that when any celebrity visits, a bar stool is added with the patron's name. You'll find bar stools painted with the names of famous people such as Ernest Hemingway, Truman Capote, Dwayne Cahill, Tennessee Williams, Jimmy Buffett, Shel Silverstein, and even John F. Kennedy and Harry Truman. Among other legends like Bob Dylan, who still show up for impromptu performances. 
The bar interior reflects its colorful heritage with a decor that includes old license plates and ID cards glued to the wall and autographed bras hanging dangling from the ceiling. Above the sign outside the building is a large jewfish that Captain Tony caught and had preserved. Now built in 1851, Captain Tony's Saloon has a history as colorful as the town of Key West itself. The building on 428 Green Street was initially an ice house and morgue, a natural progression because of the need to keep bodies cold. The wide building's doors made it easy for horses and their ice shipments to fit through since electric refrigeration had not yet been invented. Ships left port loaded with bananas headed for New England and returned with huge chunks of ice cut from the frozen northern lakes. The ice was then used as ballast in place of cargo on the return voyage to Key West. One of the uses for the ice was to keep dead bodies from rotting until they could be buried. Not only was the building used as Key West's first morgue, it was also the location of the infamous hanging tree, which was responsible for hanging pirates and one woman who had stabbed her husband and children to death. Throughout the 1890s, the building housed a wireless telegraph station, and in 1899, during the Spanish-American War, the first word of the USS Maine being destroyed came through on a wire at that building. The news came from Havana to Key West and was reported to all over the world from this location. To this day, there is a hole in the top of the roof where the telegraph pole went through. The building became a cigar factory in 1912 and then several speakeasies, the last of which was called the Blind Pig, which specialized in gambling, women, and something the locals nicknamed Hoover Gold, and that was their bootleg rum. Joe Russell opened Sloppy Joe's at 428 Green Street in 1933. It is this Sloppy Joe's where Ernest Hemingway went to drink every day at 3 p.m. while he lived in the Keys from 1928 to 1938. After a rent dispute in 1938, the landlord was going to raise the rent by a dollar a week. The owner of Sloppy Joe's moved the bar a half a block down. And a clause in their lease stated that all fixtures had to stay if he ended the lease, which is why he decided to move the entire bar during the middle of the night. And of course, that included the fixtures. And he moved it a half a block away to the corner of Duval and Green Street. And during the move, Ernest Hemingway apparently insisted on the possession of the urinal. He said, it's hard-earned money that I paid for it. The urinal can still be viewed at the Hemingway house. Originally, there was a long wooden bar on the left side of the main bar area and then booths went back to the back of the building and there was a large room off to one side that was used for gambling. The room had ceiling fans and sawdust floors and the only means of light came from two large French doors. Gambling consisted of roulette, craps, blackjack, one-armed bandits, faro, and silo. Roomba was the music of the time and one could dance all evening to live music. Now, Morgan Bird became the new owner of the building in 1940, where he operated a gay bar in the 1940s called the Duval Club, which was decorated in Victorian decor. In the 50s, he called it the Silver Slipper, and it served as a dance hall. In the early hours, Bird and had happy hours that drew in military men. After the Navy placed the Duval Club on off-limits because of its clientele, sales declined by 80%, and unfortunately, without the the revenue of the sailors on leave, the club shut down and Bird sold the building. Anthony Terracino became the next proprietor in, eight, in 1958. In 1960, he opened the bar known as Captain Tony's Pub. He did sell the par in 1989 for $650,000 at about the same time he won election as Key West Mayor about a half a dozen tries after he started. But he did sell it to Joe Faber, who is the current owner. Now for some stories and ghosts, uh, a B-grade movie called The Cuba Crossing, starring Stuart Whitman, who portrayed Captain Tony, was actually shot on location there in Key West at Captain Tony's Saloon. And of course, the renowned Jimmy Buffett actually began his singing career on the Captain Tony's bar stage. 
allegedly he was given tequila instead of payment. And his song, Last Mango in Paris, was actually written about Captain Tony and Captain Tony's heart. In 1865, a massive hurricane hit the Florida Keys, and the sea surged 15 to 20 feet, smashing almost everything in its way. The building did take the hurricane's hit and sent the doors, inventory, and fresh corpses drifting into the murky aftermath. All of the bodies were missing after the hurricane, except for one. They found one body that was near the outside of the building, which is now inside of the building where the pool room is. They never found the others, so the Bohemian people decided to make this an unofficial grave site. They buried the body that they found, built a wall around it, and put bottles full of holy water in the wall. Eventually, the owners did expand the saloon to include a billiards room, and that building is over and around the water-containing wall. Now, Captain Tony's Pub expanded throughout the 20th century, and of course they expanded it to include that billiards room. However, uh, that billiards room is always colder than anywhere else in the place, and it is said to be haunted. Locals will tell you the building served as an ice house and morgue in pre-electricity days, and folks who don't arrive alive in the port of Key West, they were buried right where the pool room stands today. Expansion was also built around the hanging tree, which grows through the roof of the building with bras and other miscellany hanging from it. Eighteen people were hanging from it during the 1880s, or in the 1800s, but one of them was not a pirate. The one exception in the latter half of the 19th century was a local woman who brutally murdered her husband and two sons. She chopped their bodies into pieces and sent the bloody chunks in the backyard for the animals to dispose of. A neighbor caught a glimpse of the scene and called others to investigate. They saw the carnage and then found the exhausted murderess inside her home wearing a blue dress covered in blood. The crowd turned into a lynch mob and drank, dragged her to the hanging tree for some instant justice. Many say she's the first ghost to inhabit Captain Tony's, and she's been seen so many times that she's referred to as the Lady in Blue. Today, the legendary Lady in Blue is Captain Tony's best-known haunting, and people spot a bluish blur passing through the room and may sometimes even see the apparition out of the corner of their eyes. Some have even claimed to photograph her. Now, Joe Favor, the current owner, first came to Captain Tony's saloon in 1976 when he was in college, and he'd heard about some of the ghosts from Captain Tony himself. And although there are variations on this bathroom story, the gist of the legend dates back to the building's early days as a saloon. A young woman who came into the building when it was a speakeasy in search of her husband allegedly had her infant child with her. When discovering her husband drunk and carousing, she had a mental breakdown and the mother snapped. She ran into the ladies' room and killed her child and then put the body under a blanket and left. In January of 2005, one of Captain Tony's female patrons had an eerie experience in the ladies' restroom that left her rattled. She said, I tried to go into the first stall, but it was locked. I figured someone was in there, and I didn't notice. I heard outside doors close. Now, just before we left, I went in again. I went for the first stall again because the back one gave me eerie chills and feelings, and I realized it was locked from the inside. While in the back stall, I again heard the outside door close. I looked around the corner. No one had walked in. I was feeling strange but continued what I was doing. All of a sudden, I heard that first stall door slam. I jumped out of the back stall, saw that no one was there, and the first stall was still locked from the inside. I ran out and never looked back. Now, in addition to the locked stall story, there are reports of strange and eerie sensations that come over you when you enter the bathroom, and some have even been deterred from using it because of the eerie feelings. Could this be related to the ghost of the widow who was looking for her husband? In the 1980s, while taking up old plywood flooring, the bones from between 8 and 15 bodies were discovered, a skeletal reminder of the find still hangs behind the bar today, and Although unearthed, 
were bones, there was also a grave marker of a young woman named Elvira, who is now exposed in the cement next to the pool table. It reads, Elvira, daughter of Joseph and Susanna Edmonds, died December 21, 1822, age 19 years, 8 months, and 21 days. Legend has it that the, in the mid-1800s, the morgue's resident mortician was so overcome by grief at the untimely death of his beloved beloved daughter Elvira that he buried her within the building's walls. He wanted to be near her even in death. Many people re report seeing him roam the bar, perhaps in search of his long lost child. There's another tombstone at the base of the hanging tree, too, and that is of Reba I. Sawyer, a Key West native who lived from 1900 to 1950. She's said to have had a long-time affair with a married man. When her husband found scandalous letters between his wife and another man, the details detailed trysts of how they would arrange to meet Captain Tony's saloon. He was mad enough that he plucked Reba's tombstone from the cemetery and deposited it angrily on the sidewalk. He placed it under the tree in front of the bar and supposedly said, This is where she wanted to be, so this is where she will stay. Captain Tony brought it inside where it rests in peace today. Joe Faber continues himself to be a skeptic. He's ne neither seen the lady in blue nor sensed any presence in the women's restroom, but he has had two experiences in the bar that he can't explain, voices that seem to offer a kind of warning of events to come. About eight or nine years ago, he was in the bar alone at four o'clock in the morning, he said. I was sitting there doing paperwork and someone called me. All I heard was, hey, Joe. I thought it was pretty odd, so I got up, looked around to see who was looking at for me. I walked out of the back of the bar, and at the back doors, they were wide open. I had just been out there maybe a half hour earlier. Faber described the back lot of the bar as being completely fenced in with no way that someone could have come in or gone out that way. He figured that if the disembodied voice had any supernatural meaning, it was simply to lock the doors. He didn't think much of it until several years later when he said he was sitting at the end of the bar night at night doing paperwork and he heard that same voice again, but this time it said, don't leave. Now he's gotten the chills, got up, and ran out the back to see if the doors were open. He checked and everything was locked down. So then he checked the entire building because he thought it might be a warning that there might be a fire or something, but nothing was wrong. Finding nothing amiss, he did go home. A few hours later, though, his phone rang. He got a call at about 6 o'clock in the morning from the police saying that a girl, maybe 17 or 18 years old, had committed suicide in front of the bar. Apparently, the girl had called her mother from her cell phone, said she'd just taken some pills to kill herself, and she was in front of a yellow building that she thought was a bar under a green awning. Her mother called the Key West police, who went from bar to bar and found the girl in front of Captain Tony's, dead. He thinks that if he had stayed at the bar that night, he would have found the girl and been able to help her. If you ask him if he knows what it was, he responds that he does not, but he does know that in 20 years that he's been here, he's heard it twice, and it was meaningful both times. Everybody can speak about the lady in blue in the bathroom and the things like that, but it means nothing to me until I've actually actively seen it or heard it. But from what I've experienced, the stories I've heard... I know something's going on. Considering that the number of people that were executed at the hanging tree and the lives that were lost by the storm surge, in addition to other deaths that took place in and around the property, maybe something or someone is still around. Now, there are other eerie occurrences that have occurred here as well. Many other bar patrons have described similar strange experiences, such as cold spots in the hallway near the ladies' restroom, doors opening and closing without anyone around, stalls being locked with no one inside, apparitions of Ernest Hemingway seen roaming the building, and one patron even reported getting third-degree burns on his hands an hour after touching the tree that stands inside the bar. But on a lighter note, the fish outside is said to bring good luck. If you throw a quarter into the mouth of the huge grouper up above the sign outside, it's said to bring you good luck and follow you until you leave the island. Okay, so yes, we actually recorded that and that aired 
while we were heading, the, we were on a cruise. We were on the cruise we're when that aired. Mm-hmm. And uh, I cut it off, but at the end of it, we said, hey, we're going to be at Captain Tony's and, you know, we'll report if we find anything. Yeah. Which, we wah, didn't. wah, wah, we didn't. We didn't. We didn't, but, but there's a ton of stories. But at there. the same time, we didn't actually do too much investigation there. No, you did like. I did like 10 minutes. But I tell you what, if you folks have not been to Key West and you're into the paranormal, definitely go. There are, oh man, there are so many. We're actually going to do a whole book just on Key West. Um, Captain Tony's is there. The cemetery's there. Um, The lighthouse. The the Zachary, I think it's called. Fort Zachary Taylor. The lighthouse. Ernest Hemingway's house. Mm -hmm. Um there's Robert the Doll's there. His uh, Robert's original house. The artist is there, house, which is yes. called the artist house. Um, and then there's also that other place where. Where we stayed, the you oh, know, the place like where we stayed. There's yeah, just the so many places that whole place on that is island. Just it's amazing. Crazy yeah. with paranormal claims and activity yeah. and stuff like that. And we did the uh, ghost tour on Key West. We did, which was cool. It was the. Um, oh. I forget the name of it, but it's the one with the trolley. We've done those a couple oh, times. Oh, Ghosts and Gravestones. Yes, Ghosts and Gravestones. Um, they have one on Key West. Mm-hmm. And actually, I'm starting to get to a point where I want to go to cities where they have those because they are quite good. And um, so the way it worked, um, and we got to do another uh, video. We did Robert the Doll already, but we didn't do East Marcello. Was that East Martello. Called? East Martello. We got to do that. But. Um, we stayed on Key West, which was cool, but we did the ghost tour, so we went to these different locations, and then, like, the next day, we were able to go back to some of these places, like mm-hmm. uh, Captain Tony's and stuff. Problem with Key West is don't expect you're going to drive around in your car because there is no parking, zero parking yeah. anywhere. Yeah. So we rented a, um, uh, they call it an electric car, but Some it's just sort like of a little souped buggy up type thing. No, it was a souped up like golf cart. Yeah, and we buzzed basically. around with that thing, and that's treated like a car too. So we, it was hard to find parking. So <laughs> Marianne's not the best navigator in the world. <laughs> no, so, I'm terrible at directions. I'm driving like, but this. But funny thing. enough, hold up. Funny <laughs> enough, like in haunted buildings. I have no trouble. I can, like, figure out the layouts of these buildings like nobody's business. And he's like, how did you remember how to get back there? Yeah. But in, but on streets? Forget it. Forget it. So I'm driving this thing, you know. I'm trying to keep up with traffic, not getting ran over. And I'm like, okay, so we need to go to this road, this road, this road to get to Captain Tony's. I'm like, let me know what's coming up. <laughs> it passed. I'm like, oh, now i got to figure out how to whip this thing around. <laughs> Get back. It took us a little while to get to Captain Tony's, then find parking. Yeah, which there's no parking and by then, Captain Tony's. And then later on, we figured out like when we walked down for I think it was the 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 uh, the ghost tour. The ghost tour. We could have just walked to Captain Tony's. Yeah, it wasn't really that far. Ah, <sighs> yeah. But anyways, great time. Yeah. So tell them about Captain Tony's. What what you did in there. So one of the claims at, at Captain Tony's is, you know, some some things happening in the women's restroom. So I said, okay, I'm going to go hang out in the women's restroom. And again, I don't do bathrooms in public. Public bathrooms and me, I, I, I just don't use them. I, I will I will hold it for, for 12 hours if I have to. I don't do it. So here I am. Do you really in, want to put that out on video? Why not? Okay. I'm, I'm one of those people. You know, there's the hoverers, there's the sitters, <laughs> there's the toilet go. paper, there's the there's like wrap everything in cellophane, and there's the people who just don't go. And I'm just one of the ones I just don't go. But anyways, I hung out in the women's so restroom anyone in the women's bathroom and spoke to herself. And I did. I was. Did anybody talking. else come in while you were in? Yes, they did. So Excuse here's me, the thing. Ma'am, who are you talking to? I went in there and I was. I started. I really I was don't the only know. I in. don't use these public bathrooms that much. <laughs> I didn't know what the. I didn't know what the. Uh, oh, what do you call that? Etiquette. Etiquette. I didn't know what the etiquette was because I don't really come in here. What so, is the you know. etiquette for a public bathroom? <laughs> Oh, goodness. Anyway, so I went in there, and I checked, and there wasn't anybody else in there. And I'm like, okay, I can do this. So I 
I mean, I'll Let me ask my you, little recorder. the person that come in and saw you talking to yourself, did they just turn around and leave, or did they use the facilities? <laughs> uh, they used the facilities. Did you keep on doing the EVP <laughs> session? Wow. Well, I kept on recording. I don't think I okay. actually said anything. I don't remember saying. But when like when I when they opened the door, I like walked forward and I went into a, one of the stalls and I closed the door. So they thought I was going to go to the bathroom too. So the whole time while she's doing this, I'm sitting at the bar. Yeah. I'm figured, hey, I'll have a beer. Yeah. Why not? I, I came out I and he had a, and he had a beer out there. But uh, so I was talking, you know, to the potential, you know, ghosties that would be in the bathroom and. And I talked to him for a little while, about 10 minutes or so. Uh, and uh, surprising somebody didn't come in to see if I was okay. Maybe that's what the lady that came in was doing. Did you doing. listen to that recording? I did. Didn't, no. Didn't hear nothing? No, nobody no. nobody talked to me. But what's surprising is, is while I was sitting there having the beer, I was talking to the manager. Yeah. You know, because I said, hey, she's going to go in there and do an AVP session. Are you okay with that? Eh, go ahead. In fact, he had that happen to him the day before. The reports with the slamming door and that kind of stuff because yeah it happens all the time man all the time this the door slams and it locks and we have to crawl under and unlock it and all kinds of stuff he goes yeah go ahead but that place is is actually really it's weird i meant the it's, word. it is oh, weird wow so there's like somebody buried under the floor right theoretically in theory and then there's a gravestone that was uh some some guy, he uh, his wife was cheating on him, so he he took her um, cheating on on him with the guy at Captain's Tony's, so that she would go to meet her her lover at Captain Tony's. So he's like, you know what? Here, have your have your uh, tombstone at Captain Tony's then. Yeah. So he stuck it. He threw it uh, on the sidewalk out front of Captain Tony's, and he's like, this is where she wants to be. And so and they the, ended up taking it inside and saying, okay, we'll keep it and here. And the tree that's inside, supposedly people were hung from it. Right. And then um, the, bottles the bottles in the have wall ashes have in the ashes bottles. in them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So there's all kinds of stuff. So as we're getting to why could this place be haunted? Pick one. Non-proper interment. <laughs> Bing! <laughs> there, there's your problem. Yeah. Uh, definitely. Definitely. But uh, a lot of celebrities have been in that place, man. Mm -hmm. And they have, like, bar stools with their names on them, you know. Yeah. Like, you know. Yeah, we took a few pictures of those, yeah. too. Yeah, yeah. You so, know, the ones that you were sitting on drinking your beer. Right. So uh, we'll do a photo video, actually, before this comes out. So it'll be right bing, there. And uh, <laughs> you can see some of the photos that we took there. And, uh, yeah, it was a cool place. Yeah. We didn't, it was again, creepy, we, didn't, but it was cool. we didn't go after hours. We can't stay up past four, you know. No, no. But, we didn't uh, do a full fledged investigation. Yeah, we just kind of went the, and chilled. The and bathroom. EVP. I did the bathroom. Yeah. The public bathroom EVP. We actually did some. Uh, well, I, that should be in that video. But the bed and breakfast we stayed at, we did some investigation in there. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So. Yeah. Anything else you would like to add for Captain Dooney? Uh, if you go, don't forget to throw your coin in the fish's mouth out front. That's right. Good luck. We Absolutely. did. We did. We did. Chucked it in there. We sure did. Got some good luck. If you've been to Captain Tony's or you have some more stories about Captain Tony's in Key West, please leave them in the comments. I love almost, to hear from them. I almost forgot about the like shrunken head, the the skull behind the counter. Yeah. Almost forgot that one. Yeah. That's a cool one too. Sorry. Yeah. So if you like the video. <laughs> Yeah. If you like this video, give us a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed by now... Please do, so he'll stop do. whining. I, I want to make you a deal. If we get 10,000 subscribers, I'll quit saying that. <laughs> oh, gosh. <laughs> so you're going to hear me say it a lot. Subscribe. <laughs> Tired of hearing me say it? Yes. Right. Okay, so that's going to wrap this up. Until next time. Thanks for watching. And happy hunting. If you like this video and like to see more in the future, please be sure to hit the subscribe button and give us a like below. Also, if you have any comments or, or suggestions for our future videos, please leave them in the comment section. Thanks for watching this episode of Our Haunted Travels.